Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Seftech, where we keep grinding and grinding in the hopes of meeting the final boss, but he eludes us all the time. Because apparently, we're not grinding fast enough. Last episode we added a new farm in order to increase our production of meteoric iron and our production skyrocketed. At this very moment we have 421,000. Wow. And by increasing our production, we can now run 92 paperclip factories at the same time at full speed. I wanted to see how many singularities we're generating every minute and I did AFK for 20 minutes and we got 30 singularities. That means we're making one singularity every 40 seconds. We almost have 2000 singularities and we're going to need 18,000 more. At the speed of one every 40 seconds, it's going to take us 8.3 days in real life to get two ultimate singularities and summon the final boss. 8.3 days is not the worst, but it's also not the best. So we need to work towards the creative tank so that we can cut it in half. Because four days and four hours is something that I can live with. But in order to make the creative tank, we're going to need four blood tanks tier 10. It's a very expensive and complicated recipe. So what I do is that I order like 10,000 blank ruins at the same time. Then I order blood tank tier 4, 100 of them. Each 100 blood tanks tier 4 is going to give us one tier 10. So I do order them in badges because our CPUs are not the best. I have improved them, but still it's a very complicated recipe. Oh, and we also have 2184 spider eyes. Can I order like 400? No. Oh, we're out of slime. Uh oh, well, obviously slime is not the issue, but gas tiers are. This is my entire supply of eyes of the Galgador. So let us see how many metals we can make. I'm also making more platinum blocks. We don't have a shortage of platinum. It's just that converting them into blocks takes some time. We are running low on the eyes of the Galgador and we cannot make more because we do not have enough gas tiers. We can make maybe one more stack. I mean, if the platinum is ready. I have used all of our resources and let us see how many large lumps of Galgador can we make. One stack. And 21. Well, honestly speaking, for today we only needed like 48. <laughs> I'm happy. Ooh. And just to refresh your memory, we need the enhanced Galgadorian metal in order to make the ultimate ingot because we are going to need the ultimate catalyst in order to make the creative tank. And so far, I think this was our bottleneck. So can I make 48 more? Yes. Very good. And I do understand that we are going to need four in order to make the creative tank itself, but it's okay. We have it anyways. There is no way that I would screw this up, is there? Because I need 32 of you, I think. And I need eight of you, which we have it. Okay, good. That goes over here, 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 and here. We also need a paperclip singularity in the center. And of course, we also need four glass singularities, which is going to be expensive, but uh, we have all the sand. So it's just a matter of time. We also have 200 blood tanks tier four, I think we should be able to make three tier 10s. Yes, very good, very good. Can we make another one? On a positive note, we're done with slates. Good, it's just going to take a bajillion gears to craft it. So I guess we can turn you off because we don't need you anymore. All right, guys, let me fill in the recipe with the items that we have or I can craft easily and then I will bring you back for the items that we're missing. This is the recipe of the creative tank and you might notice we're not missing that much. This is what we have. And the items that we don't have or over here. One of them is the theoretical infinite water source, which is basically water essence and base essence nugget. So here is a water seed and we're going to replace one of the spider seeds with the water seed. And we don't need you anymore. And the reason that I said we do not need spider eyes anymore is because we already have 45 Galgadorian metal, the enhanced version, and we need maybe 32 more. And I think we have enough spider eyes. Yeah, we have 2400. That's good. Another item that we're missing is solid lava from Abyssal Craft. And that's also relatively easy. All we need is a lava bucket. And in a transmutator, that should give us solid lava. You can hold lava in your hand and you don't burn. The lava goes here and the theoretical infinite water source goes over here. Now we come to the part where I'm slightly scared of. We need four 4K fluid storage disks from refined storage. I think logic dictates that we first make the patterns and then see what we are missing. We need four of them. Oh, we're missing buckets. I think I saw a recipe that we can make buckets in a hydraulic press. So do you work? Yes. And we can make four. Nice. And the disks 
go over here. The only thing that we're missing is the four glass singularities and the infinite water source from overloaded, which is not that bad. We also have 29,000 glass, we need 11,000 more. Well, I did say it's not that bad, but it's going to need a lot. We need four fluid pumps from immersive engineering, then we need eight pumps from mechanism, more theoretical water sources and water sigils. Uh -huh. I remember that the first time I made the water sigil it was very difficult, but this time it was easy peasy. And the only thing that we're missing is palace crystals, the empowered version, so I have to set up our empowerer. I put them here for now and it's going to take some time until we get the empowered version. So let us try to make the glass singularity as well. So again, this is going to be a very temporary setup, but we're going to have a quantum compressor over here, export the glass and hopefully get the singularity. And we need 8000 more glass. Well, at least we have the first one, which goes over here. We need 5,600 pieces of glass and then we should be done, I think. So it's just a waiting game. While we are waiting for the glass, at least we can make the infinite water source. That is three of them, why? I don't know, for some reason it did not count it, but it's okay. And you go next to the bucket. We're just missing one singularity. We're almost done. Only 400 left. I broke the export bus and we only need 21. And you go in there and you should start working. No? Do you need like items to go in? Or is it just a visual glitch? I think it's a visual glitch. Yes it was. We have the final one. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the creative tank. You have gained 200 prestige points. For what? It says that I have earned prestige points but I don't know for what. The first thing that we're going to use the creative tank for is going to be essence. We have a little bit of essence in this guy, the mob crusher, and we just need to extract it. Did you void it? Why? I have no idea. So let us see if this guy is useful. Hello. Doesn't work on him. Also doesn't work on this guy. Oh yes. Sorry. It was off. <laughs> well, I just have to do this for a few times until we get one bucket. Okay, the market guy does not generate essence which is perfectly fine by me, we can use other mobs. So we finally have one bucket, can I fill you in? Yes. So these are black hole tanks and they have a capacity of 2 million buckets and we're going to fill them in. It's like Project Ozone, you just right click and this guy is full. Although it doesn't show that it's full. I'm confused. I did make a gauge dropper and let us see if we can change the fluid which is inside the creative tank. Can we? No. Here? No. You right click? No. Shift? No. Oh, you can just empty it. Oh. And I could have used the gauge dropper for essence. But we are going to ignore that because today is a beautiful day. I have hooked up 63 of our paperclip factories to lubricant and now we're producing paperclips, at least in these 63 that we have over here, at double the speed. We have reduced those 8 days to almost 5. And the reason that I have not hooked up the other 29 paperclip factories to lubricant is because we're not generating that much meteoric iron over here. We are getting a surplus, we have almost 800,000, but... Uh, I don't think it's going to be enough for the additional 29. The only issue that I had was that whenever you fill in the tank with lubricant, the machine will not recognize the new recipe and it's not going to work faster. You have to wait for the entire badge which is inside the input hatch to get finished and then it will update. And that alone took 15 minutes. Over here I had to make two more quantum compressors because we were not keeping up with making the singularities. Apparently there is a limit on how much items you can input inside a quantum compressor and I didn't know that. And at this very moment, we have 2360 paperclip singularities and we're getting one every 25 seconds. So I'm very happy. But paperclip singularity singularity is not the only singularity we need in order to summon the final boss. We also need a dead compass singularity and for that we need to spawn mobs. And this is why we needed a lot of essence. Oh, and by the way, let me show you something. So this is my black hole tank for lubricant. And if I break the creative tank, look how fast we're consuming lubricant. It's six buckets every second. Also, since we're going to have a glass issue, can I take you? Yes, because I think we should dedicate one of these arc furnaces for just making glass. And we just put you on top. Good. That is 262,000 pieces of sand and that will give us 262 pieces of glass. So let us get back to the singularities. There is a singularity called a dead compass singularity and that requires 10,000 dead compasses. So normally you will get it when you die, but there are also some mobs which will drop it. So we need to start spawning them and therefore we need a mob duplicator. And of course, we should also find the mob. Yes, these guys. So the mob duplicator accepts a range add-on of five. Hello, he died. 
Oh, that thing is on. Basically, what I want to do is to see how fast this thing is going to work. And if we get the dead compass. Okay, I should have probably stopped. Enough. Well, it does work. So we're good. They're everywhere. <laughs> So the rate is not that bad, although I have looting 4 on this one. So a range add-on of 5 means that we're going to need a space which is 7 by 7, and that is 5. This is 7. You know, building will be much easier if we have a proper building wand, and we do not have enough nether stars. We only have one. I'm really happy that I checked, because if we lost this one, we couldn't have spawned the wither. I love watching this. It's so nice. And we have an unbreakable wand. Very good. We are going to set it up over here and later on maybe we're going to make a communication tower out of it. But for the moment, you go over there. We are also going to have a mob masher with some sharpness upgrades. Four more swords. We have sharpness 10 and fortune 10, I don't know. And I'm very happy that we do have vector plates in this mod pack. Mob masher goes in the center, we give you the upgrades. And how do we want to do this? Placing these without flight is a pain. Actually, it's not. You can just hold shift. <laughs> okay. If this was any other mod pack, I would have used Ender.io conduits in order to power the spawner and provide it with essence. Unfortunately, in this mod pack, we only have mechanism and you cannot cover mechanism cables. And I'm scared that the mobs will spawn on top of the spawner and, you know, don't fall down to their deaths. So instead, we're going to use Xnet because Xnet also has facades. And on a positive note, we can just use one cable to give it power an essence. So we have an energy channel and now we need a fluid channel, which yes, here it is. We extract from you and insert it here. Well, it wasn't really fast. Oh, you can increase it to five buckets. Okay, that's good. Xnet facade, right click to mimic like this. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was easy. And we can just put it over there. Also, the collection system is not going to be something super fancy and I think we can fit everything down here. We use an ender hopper and the range should be enough. Yes, it covers the entire building. Good. And I also brought a redstone block for our mob masher, so it should be active. Yes, it is. Very good. I'm guessing we can start spawning them, right? Yes. Very good. Why are you fighting it? Uh oh, that's not good. You were supposed to be a range 5. I always make this very stupid mistake. Range 5 means that it's going to add 5 to each side. So it's 11 by 11. So for a 7 by 7, we need range 3. And now you should be fine, right? Yes. I don't really like that, but I don't know. Do we need more mob mashers or all of them will eventually die? I don't know. Oh, we're also getting armor. Well, I do have a slight issue. How do I get rid of all the junk? I had to make a few changes to the farm because they were not dying fast enough. So I did add more mob mashers and I also added redstone control for the spawner. So we can turn it on and off. And now it's working. And we do have a viewing window, which is very good and inconvenient. Yes, much better. Also, they were dropping a lot of experience and we were not gathering it. So I had to make monoliths of experience and they will gather every single experience drop in one chunk. Uh, it was two chunks. I did not make the farm properly. So yeah. We have two of them. Another issue that we have with the farm is that our friends are dropping a lot of garbage, including bones and flesh. So I was a very responsible citizen and we're getting rid of them in there. It's nice. It's very nice and very satisfying to watch. And we already have 720 dead compasses. 721. Very good. Whenever you spawn these guys, they cause a lot of lag and I do not know why. So maybe when I'm recording, this should not be on. In any case, we are getting a decent amount of dead compasses and it's relatively fast, so it's not going to be a huge problem. I think it was two episodes ago that somebody asked me that if you use the RF tool spawner in order to spawn the wither, considering that you have to invest one nether stars, how many nether stars will you get back? The price of spawning the wither is 0.1, so if you give it one nether star, by default you should get 10. Of course you have already invested one, so you're gaining 9. But I have infused the matter beamers with dimensional shards and they are all 100% infused. So if I use a nether star, I will get 14. Also, I think since I have dismantled our carrot farm, we're out of carrots. Well, we do have 7000 in our ME system. But it is okay, we can use these garden cloches because we're not using them for anything else. So I'm going to use 4 of them for carrots and 5 of them for wheat. Because as I have mentioned in the previous episode, there is also a cookie singularity and that is our entire supply of wheat, which I have to harvest it manually. So we're going to use a garden cloche, we will get seeds, which I will use for meteoric iron, and we will get wheat for the cookies. We just need to separate you, you will be for carrots, and you are for wheat and seeds. 
Another thing that I want to do today is that I want to fight the final boss of Abyssal Craft. So let us try to get the Supremium Sword. It does need a bunch of Wither Skeleton Skulls and let us see if we can find one. Yes, here he is. You come with me. I think I can access it from here, right? Yes. Yeah, you see, Wither Skeletons are not causing any lag. It's just those mobs. Which is weird. I do not have beheading on the mob mashers, so let us see if we are getting any skulls. Oh, we are. Good. I did make the pattern for making the Supremium Tool Core, and we can make it. Very good. And therefore, we can have a sword. And I also want to upgrade it, so let's make a tinkering table. And we need strength 2. That's a complex recipe. We need the apple. So this is strength 1, and for 2, we need to upgrade it one more time. On its own, it's going to do 21 damage, with the upgrade 41. Nice. So I'm guessing the only thing that we have to do is to make the Oblivion Death Bomb. And we can make it. And I think we can turn you off. So there is something which has me confused. I do not know what this is. I mean, I know what it is, but apparently I have not discovered it yet. Maybe we have to go to the Realm of the Shadows, which is not a very complicated thing to do. We just have to go to Omotal and jump into the void. Are we good? Yeah, I still don't know what it is. Interesting. I want to check is that can I get blinded? Yes. That is not good. Again, it is perfectly fine. We go to Abyssal Wastelands and summon him. Now that we are going to summon him, I'm slightly confused. I wanted to summon him because of his sword. I have a better sword. Yes, yes, yes. Gather around. I have a gift for you. We run. Run. Did you explode or yeah, it did. I think we just have to wait somewhere for it to update. I am unleashed. Nice. With blindness, this is not going to be an easy fight, but we do have a decent sword. And I do see him, so it's good. He has 20 armor. Why? You have more armor than me. You guys told me that I should not take any damage with resistance 5. I do take damage. Look. I mean, I survived, but you know, I took damage. So do we have the sword somewhere? Yes. This does 30 damage and you gather souls. Oh, I like that. So if you gather souls, will you do more damage or how does it work? The book says he carries a powerful sword capable of tearing out the souls of the living. I have no idea what that means, but okay, we have it anyways. I was checking the advancements for the creative age and it seems we're not doing that bad. This is still far, far away, the final boss, but maybe we can also make the creative energy cube. Because you know, the recipe looks very complicated, but I think it's something that we can manage. We need 5 redstone singularities and we have 1.4 million redstone. So I'm guessing making 5 singularities is not going to be a problem. We need 4 dense energy cells, which goes in the corners. We need a lot of compressed obsidian and I think we have plenty over here. Yes, we have plenty. And thankfully we could afford the advanced power cell from RF tools. We need four tier four solar panels, the controller, some paper clips, which we have in very large quantities. We already had basic induction cells on auto crafting, five singularities and some circuits. Oh, they have to be empty. And I do have a wireless charger over here, which I don't remember where it is. Yes, I was tearing down my base and I finally found it. Yeah, I think now we're good. I just have to clean up the mess. I was wondering what the hell is this block and it's an ultimate furnace. We need four. I have set in the pattern and can we make four? Yes. Okay, so for the hyper energy sender from overloaded, we're going to need reinforced teleposition focus from blood magic, which is not a terrible recipe. Yeah, it's not. It's basically just ender pearls in the blood altar and some blood shards, which are relatively easy to find, but so far nobody's dropping it. Oh, they don't stack. Nice. We need four of them, I think. So the only things that we're missing is the laser from actually additions and some ultimate catalyst, which requires the ultimate ingot. But this time we only need half a stack. We only have 45 enhanced Galgadorian metals, but I think that should be enough in order to make 45 of you. And you go over here. I'm no longer worried about the enhanced Galgadorian metal because we have the creative tank and this one has a molten version. So we should not have any problems. And the last item on the list is the energy relay. This is not going to be a super complex recipe. We just need two empowered Enori crystals and two diamantine. And that's it. And by crystals, I mean the blocks. Oh, each one gives you four. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the creative energy cube. That was extra... Okay, I wanted to see how much RF this guy is going to generate, but unfortunately our induction matrix is completely full. Look, <laughs> so I had to make another ultimate induction cell and we're going to test it right now. Um, we put you up there. Yeah, 
I disconnected our quantum entangler porter and currently we are inputting 107 RF per tick which is from the solar panels. And if we put you over here, we are generating 13 million RF per tick. Wow. And I think the reason we are at 13 million is that uh, this is maxed out. <laughs> And obviously now I have to make ultimate induction providers because I want to know how powerful this guy is. Okay, we have two ultimate induction providers and we're gonna put them over here. Will you max out one more time or no? No. Oh, that's the wrong one. This is the creative one. Sorry, 39 million RF. Um, it's still maxed out. I honestly have no idea how much RF this guy is going to generate, but at least we have managed to make two of the creative items today. Which does make me really happy. And before we wrap up the episode, I think we are approaching the end of the series because I think we have like three or four more episodes left and that's it. <laughs> so we have to start thinking of a new pack. If you have any suggestions, uh, let me know in the comments. We will have a poll, you will have an election, and we will see what mod pack I will play next. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one, bye bye.